Good morning, Jonathan. Buenos dias, Padre Jefe. Morning has broken. Está roto. I'm Father Jeff, consecrated by holy orders. I'm Jonathan, consecrated by baptism. Well, how are you, Mr. Bilingual, this morning? Yeah, I'm pretty good. All righty. Good job. You know, it's been a while since I've seen you. Yeah, thank goodness. I mean, <laughs> the weekend was nice. You went uh, down to some... Where'd you go for a wedding? Lincoln. Lincoln. Lincoln, and that was Friday afternoon. Friday evening, Friday sometime. Yep. And that was good? That's they got good. all married? They're hitched? They're hitched. Ready to go? Yeah. Excellent. I mean, I don't know Was how... it a big wedding? It's decently sized. I mean... Did, was there any kind of reception or anything There was like a that? reception, but it was... You know, it's COVID, so things are... <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny when you read the uh, the directed health measures for weddings. It's like, you know, meals, parties have to be seated at tables six feet apart, and you, you have to be households grouped together. And uh, and then there's like this thing, that dancing is permitted so long as people remain at their tables. <laughs> yeah, I, don't <laughs> I don't understand what that means. No, we didn't stay too long because the kids... Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's hard. You know, when you can't just go run around and do whatever, whatever. And was it a big wedding? Yeah, it was decent. Like I said, it was decently sized. I okay. had um, a friend that Genevieve met through Focus, but went to UNL. Okay. Um, and she's been with Focus forever and has a lot of friends. And oh. you know, it's been. Where was the wedding at? It was at the Newman Center. Oh, okay. I, I hear that's a lovely building. Have you still not been there? I don't go to Lincoln. I can count on one hand the number of times I've been to Lincoln. And you're from Nebraska? Yeah. I've been to Lincoln more than you. I don't understand why one would go to Lincoln. Well, the Newman no Center offense for to the Lincoln The Newman Knights. Center, for one, is a... Uh, it's a really beautiful building. A okay. beautiful church. You should go. Maybe. <laughs> you know, maybe it can give you some inspiration for our church when we get to building well, it. Well, that will uh, probably not be me. That will be someone further down the road, unless, you know, we come into lots of money. Right. So... Santa Claus, I hope you're listening. If, if there's a very generous benefactor out there <laughs> that would like to... Build a traditionally build a styled Catholic church, we would love uh, to help you help yeah. us do that. Yeah, and, and don't wait until you die. Just, you know, <laughs> you to, I, I don't want to say, well, when you die, just give us all exactly. the money. No. We want to see the fruits of your labors We now. want you to be able to see the fruits of your labors. That's so, right. That's right. Which reminds me... Hello. Like, subscribe, do all share. the things, share, and if you're watching, email us. Here's yeah, our us, emails. Let us know. We want to know. It's not that it was like a hump, you know, it's not like for pure curiosity. As we were talking about yesterday at the end of the show, just the event in case you didn't make it all the way to the end, <laughs> we, uh, we, just, we just want to allocate our time appropriately, and we just don't know what we're going to do with the morning show in the new year. So we would like to know... Uh, do you watch? How often do you watch? Um, is Where this you're something from? worth doing on a regular basis, once a week basis? Uh, we're just trying to figure things out. So help us do that. Tell us your watching habits. Yes, because it's like our Nielsen ratings. For sure. I mean, there's a lot of time goes into putting this on every day, um, and so yeah, if, if it's not that, if it's just twenty of you or fifteen <clears throat> of you, that that's and they're worth it. Excellent. It's great. And but we maybe we would do you. a more substantial once a week thing rather than a shorter four times a week thing or, you know, we just want to know. Yeah. So if you want it to stay the same, please respond. <laughs> Wait, we need to know what's going on. So thanks for your, um, your continued viewership and participation with us in this journey through whatever this is. Yeah. <laughs> This weekend was St. Nicholas. Did you uh, did St. Nicholas visit your house, Jonathan? My did shoes you, did were he out. find your new did he find your new place? You know what? I I did all the proper things, you know, you have to forward your mail at the post office, <laughs> do all the things, change all your cards and yep. all your shipping. I had to go back in something I ordered for Christmas once and I had to send the people an email saying, "Hey, I don't live there anymore because the automatic address was oh, already sure, on there." Oh, sure, sure. Um, so of course. Did Saint you forward Nicholas. that to the North Pole? Yeah. Okay. I'm just asking. That was first. That was the first thing. Make sure that Santa Claus I my knows. priorities in line. <laughs> Let's make sure he knows where I live. And so I just made sure to get my shoes out there. And I got a little treats. Yeah. Well, we, we never did the shoe thing. That was oh. not a... That was not a tradition in our house. We, we, St. Nicholas Day, you know, it was one of those things that we never really remembered I guess that it was St. Nicholas Day but it was always amazing because 
um, what would happen is St. Nicholas Day for us, um, we'd be sitting in the house uh, in the afternoon or the evening, usually, you know, and then all of a sudden you would hear pounding on the windows and the walls around the outside of the house. And it was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what is that? And then you'd run to the front porch, and on the front porch were two bags, one for me and one for my brother, all wrapped up, and it was full of Christmas candies and, like, uh, apples and oranges and um, some cookies that Mrs. Santa Claus had baked. And so we got all these little, little uh, gift bags from the North Pole. That is terrifying. <laughs> I know! And for some reason... Dad was never home to save us. It was like, oh, he's going to run to the store. And then when he was gone, St. Nicholas would show up. And you'd hear him knocking on the windows, and so you'd have to go run and see. Well, he knows the best time time to attack, apparently. I know, when Dad's away. What's that? The earth will shake. It was something. (laughs) So that's that's how St. Nicholas visited our house. Ours is uh, much more uh, shoes out. That's like an old tradition, old German tradition, maybe. I'm not sure what uh, know, what thing that comes from. I'm all about tradition. Well, this was our tradition. <laughs> it was a preview to Christmas because I suppose if you had been bad, you would have got the lumps of coal in your little brown paper bag, probably. So I need you to vote. Just post shoes out, banging on windows. <laughs> Um, naughty or nice. We have all kinds of things that we can uh, we can vote on here this, these days. We're also, we've crossed into the second week of Advent. We... Two candles lit. Two candles we're lit. We're burning, uh, we're building up the heat here in this room. And, uh, yeah, two it's candles nice, lit. We're, we're halfway through. This is our John the Baptist now. We're in the middle of... Middle of uh, Advent, we get some John the Baptist emotion going on. So I think these two weeks... Uh, second and third are typically John the Baptist. Repent! Prepare you the way! There's someone coming. There is. Get yourself ready. It's exciting. The full confession lineup now is going to kick in this week. I already started last week, even though it was my day off. Came in Monday evening. Um, and I think, it, I, think it's, I think it's the same time every day this week. Um, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. My, my schedule is all off. I'm, my days are running together, Jonathan. It's because of the Holy Day. We were at Mass last night. We were not at confessions. I'm like, I did something last night. What the heck was I doing last night? It was Mass last night. Because it's a Holy Day of Obligation. What? I know. See, everything is running together. Too many things. We've got St. Nicholas going on. We've got Second Advent going on. We do have Advent confessions starting this week. But last night was not confessions. Last night was Holy Day Mass. And tonight we also have Holy Day Mass again. So the Immaculate Conception of Mary is today. The 8th, Tuesday. (sighs) Last night we had already one Mass. If you were here, great. If not, we got some today. Obviously the obligation is still uh, in limbo. And um, so you may or may not be out and about yet these days to come to Mass. But we have a noon Mass uh, today as well as the evening mass at 5.30. Should I stream the noon mass? That might be a good thing to do. Okay, we haven't planned on it. You know, we didn't talk about our live streams. I think, yeah, because let's do the, let's live stream the noon mass. (laughs) I'll be there. So if you're not out and about, and you want to go to to mass, you can participate via live stream, noon, Immaculate Conception of Mary, Right here. Right here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's been a whirlwind of a weekend. There was just a lot of things going on, and even though it's Tuesday, it still feels like we're coming off of weekend. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know how you have anything straight. I don't, you know, think it, forgetting the mass last night, confessions. We, in our planning well, and I'm day, doing all sorts of scheduling. I'm doing all sorts of everything. Scheduling of last, you know, last week, we talked about how we went pretty in-depth. We scheduled through some things through spring of 2022. Yeah, that's only one year away. That's only one year away, Jonathan. You stop it. We're still in 2020. (laughs) And it was... um, But those are things that we needed to get in the calendar. So You got to plan ahead. Planning ahead. So let's talk about the Immaculate Conception of Mary. Since this is her feast day today, uh, it is... It's... um, 
It's also the patronal feast of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. So uh, this America is uh, under the patronage of Mary Immaculate, Mary the Immaculate Conception, and we uh, honor her by that title, uh, and particularly turn the United States over to you know her sinlessness, her holiness, and just ask for that powerful, powerful intercession. Yeah, she gave herself that title, didn't she not? Well, I am the Immaculate Conception. Yes, yes, but she was. I mean, this was something that was known. Mm -hmm. I mean, she revealed herself that way, so it wasn't like she acknowledged that she was also the Immaculate Conception. There you go. But it was a title. I mean, long before Lourdes, where she said that. Yeah, the Immaculate Conception rolls around. I mean, it's one of those things that a people always confuse. You think the Immaculate Conception, and because Christmas is a couple weeks away. The conception of our Lord in Our Lady's womb. Um, not really, because that's only... You're eight and a half months late <laughs> well, for Jesus' conception. It's two weeks of uh, gestation there, and that doesn't, you know... Or really 12 months out. and two weeks, Lord have mercy. Yeah, that's a, that's a long pregnancy. So, no, the Immaculate Conception of Mary is uh, Mary's conception, the conception of Mary. Mm -hmm. Mary was conceived immaculately in the womb of her mother, St. Anne, without a stain of original sin. So even as we were talking about our Jesse tree here, the fall that we encountered there, uh, the, the, the stain, the pain of original sin now is passed on to all of humanity. But in order for Jesus to come to us and become a human, he can't have that. No. So the, the, the Lord prepares a perfect and worthy vessel for his humanity in, in the Virgin Mary. But by being human, just like Jesus, she still experienced the pains of being human. She suffered. She suffered. I mean, she yeah. suffered just like Christ under the cross with him, her suffering, the, the prophet Simeon, a sword will pierce your heart that you will be just like the depths of your soul will ache and, and hurt because of sin in the world. Um, but she herself was not a participant in that. Right. So the church recognizes that Mary, uh, fully human, saved in the womb of her mother Anne. So at the moment of Mary's conception... God intervenes and prevents original sin from even touching her in the first place, forgives that original sin. Uh, Mary needs to be saved just like every one of us needs to be saved. She was saved by the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of her son in advance. Because God can see all things at once. So if you picture God looking down at the timeline, he sees Mary about to be conceived over here, and he sees his son dying on the cross and rising from the dead over here. And he applies the grace of that moment to her in this moment because he is God. And he can do that. So he saves Mary by this, the gracious act of his son. It's like video editing. He just copied and pasted. Yeah, yeah, you know, just like <laughs> video editing. That's what, the, that's what God is doing. He's sitting up there in his uh, studio kind of just putting things together. Yeah. So Mary is saved, like any one of us are saved. She is just saved in a unique way. You and I are saved in baptism. We say that at the beginning of every show, consecrated by baptism. That is where we are saved. Mary was saved uh, prior to, to birth, uh, at the moment of her conception. And then she continued to say yes to God. Pretty special. The Immaculate Conception. It is something. So she shows us really what to be human is all, all about. Um, one of the examples that I often, what I used recently in RCIA a few weeks ago, uh, when we were talking about Mary and the Saints and the mystery of the Immaculate Conception. And I know I think we talked about this earlier on in the morning show, the, that there are two ways that you can save someone. If you have a, a pit that you have fallen into, Jonathan, I will reach down and pull you out, and there I have saved you from that pit. But at the same time, if I see you about to fall into the pit, I put my arm out and I stop you from falling in, and I have saved you from the pit. So in both cases, I have saved you, 
one before and the second after. So the Lord chooses to save all of us in the normal course of baptism, but uh, in order to get there, there had to be one unique moment of salvation. And that was for Mary. Yeah. Pretty wonderful. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. God does some good things. Yeah. Mary had that little lamb. <laughs> its fleece was white as snow. Oh, goodness. Speaking of little lambs. Whose fleece was white as snow. Oh, look at this. Our Advent, uh, our, um, what is this? A Jesse tree. Jesse tree. Our Jesse tree uh, for the day is uh, following upon Abraham. So Abraham was yesterday. And uh, we spoke about Abraham, our father in faith. Um, who do we got today? Well, we're kind of sticking with Abraham a little bit. Tell me more. Well, you know, he was supposed to have descendants as numerous as the stars, Indeed. as the grains of the sand, and he was old. He was an old I, man. He was 75 when the first promise was made. He still hadn't had any kids. <laughs> so, Sarai. Sarai. Yep. But then he had a kid. And that child's name? Isaac. Isaac. Isaac, the uh, that's a picture of a sheep. <laughs> but. Isaac, Isaac, the 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 promised uh, son of Abraham and Sarah, mm -hmm. and uh, the 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 story of Isaac. The reason why the lamb is uh, symbolic because after uh, Abraham had this child, we remember that God. Uh, asked him to sacrifice the boy. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people wonder about that whole, you know, what the heck was, why would God do that? What was he doing? Um, in the cultures where Abraham lived, it was common uh, in, in some religions, in some of those religions there, that you would uh, sacrifice one of your children. That, that I don't know whether it was your firstborn or some child, I don't know. But to, to burn your child, to sacrifice your child, was something that you had to do to please the gods. So uh, what, what God and now asks, the true God asks of Abraham is, do you love me as much as the pagans love their imaginary gods? Ooh. So he's really putting Abraham's uh, faith to the test. Now God knows. I mean, God does not want that kind of sacrifice. What he wants is Abraham's love. Right. And, and, and this is a moment for Abraham to demonstrate, I think maybe to himself, that he really does have a relationship with God. He loves God. He trusts God. And he knows that whatever God asks of him is ultimately going to be good. So he uh, takes Isaac uh, to sacrifice. Yeah. And they're building this uh, altar and uh, just before Abraham slaughters him and sacrifices him, uh, the Lord tells him, Stop! You have proven your love. Uh, this is not the kind of sacrifice I want. Uh, we spoke about this the other day. Yeah. That there's only one sacrifice that the Father uh, wants, and that is the love of his Son, Jesus Christ, poured out for us on the cross. So Isaac, in some sense goes to his death and comes away alive. Yeah, he even prepares his, he owns his own altar and everything else. The, the Carries the wood, carries, carries the, the wood, wood for the altar that he will be sacrificed upon. Yeah, so the, the parallels between that and the crucifixion are, it's identical. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see the son, the only son of the father, climbing up the hill. Innocent. Innocent, <laughs> climbing up the hill, carrying the wood on his shoulders for the sacrifice, and as he is, uh, and and he goes up there, and he comes away alive, and that's exactly what happens with Jesus. Of course, he goes up the hill of Calvary, and he comes away alive. So this uh, ornament that we're putting on our tree uh, is actually the Paschal Lamb. It is the, the, the Lamb of the Resurrection, so you can see the halo of Jesus Christ and the, the banner of victory over uh, death. So it really reminds us that in salvation history, all of these things, 
keep pointing to Jesus. It keeps pointing to Jesus. So Isaac, the um, the only son who does not die, is uh, oh. and God provides because then he off he did provide. Was it a there ram? was a ram caught in the the bushes? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and he was then brought to the the altar because they didn't have the sacrifice just yet. Exactly. So our reflection on Isaac and the ram. Let's see what they come up with. Uh, faith is the conviction that the Lord will provide, even when all the evidence contradicts his conviction. Abraham loved God. He also loved Isaac. But did he love God enough to give up his son? The New Testament answers this awful question by turning it around. God loved us enough to give up his son. On the strength of no more than this assurance, we are challenged to believe even as Abraham did on the edge of despair, that God will provide. Faith is easy when life is easy, but when life becomes hard and when we need health or freedom or hope, we have nothing. We may receive nothing beyond a promise that God cares and the signs of that care that he has shown us. And so we pray. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? I give him my heart. And so we add uh, Isaac to our Jesse tree today, remembering that he foreshadows Christ, the risen lamb of God. Right next to you. Yes. So as we uh, as we think about this, you know, we talked last week that maybe what we would begin getting into this week is uh, taking a look at the sacred liturgy. Yes. And uh, talking about the kind of worship that is acceptable to the Father and what that looks like and how we enter into that. So you know, here at the end of the the hour today, let's just uh, maybe kind of start by asking ourselves, what is liturgy? What, what is that? What, what are we doing? What are we doing, Jonathan? I don't know. <laughs> no, but liturgy is not just mass. Um, right? Oh, I can't think of the right word, but it is a form of worship. Yep, absolutely. Um, instituted by the church? I don't know if that's the right word, but... Not. <laughs> <laughs> you go with it. Um, Sounds good to me. But instituted by the church, or you know, like held by the church, that is... Um, because all liturgy has a process. You know, you have liturgy of the hours, which is the, your daily prayers. Yep. Um, you have other liturgy services. Yeah. Liturgy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's like, well, we use this word all the time, but what the heck are we meaning when we say that? And there, the liturgy is actually parts of liturgy. You've got the liturgy of the word. You've got the liturgy of the Eucharist. We've got these different things. So uh, the word liturgy comes from a Greek word, liturgia, and liturgia is the, uh, it literally means the work of the people. Mm. So it was, a, it was a, an ancient con uh, concept in, in, you know, those old civilizations like ancient Greece and whatnot, where there really was a sense that if you belonged to a community, if you belonged to this city-state or whatever, you had an obligation uh, to that city-state. Mm -hmm. And so everybody had to give public service. You know, it was just what was built in. You had to do public service. Uh, that's liturgia. Liturgia is the work of the people for the people. That you are doing something that, that contributes to the building up of that community. So the first Christians, <clears throat> in describing what it was they were doing, uh, they borrow this word from the secular uh, Greek world and they incorporate it into their Christian mystery. So this, this thing that we do, uh, we're going to call that liturgia and we're going to expand what it means. So now we have liturgy. And first and foremost, it is, not, it is no longer the work of the people. It's not something we do. The liturgy first and foremost, is the work of the church 
but it is what God does in the church. So the ultimate liturgy is Jesus's passion, death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. The Paschal mystery is the liturgy of the universe. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the priest. The cross is the altar. Jesus Christ is the victim that is sacrificed. So he is both priest and victim, and he offers his sacrifice upon the altar of the cross for the salvation of the world. So a lot of people, I think, think when we think of liturgy, it's all the stuff that we're doing, mm -hmm. that we're running around doing a bunch of things. There's someone singing, there's someone reading, there's someone ushering, there's someone greeting, there's someone you know collecting money, there's someone doing all these things, there's someone priesting or deaconing or, or serving <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> or videoing oh. or, or, you know. Um, but liturgy is, is way more than the stuff that you and I are doing. Do you have any thoughts on that, Jonathan? <laughs> yeah, so what is liturgy then, Father <laughs> Liturgy is the work of God saving us. So here is what liturgy is. Liturgy is the work of God saving us. And it is our participation in that. So it is our work. We are doing something, but we are doing something with God who is doing the thing. He's doing the heavy lifting. He's doing the heavy lifting. We're picking up this little splinter, you know, and saying, look at me carry the work too. Or we kind of hang on and be, are along for the ride. Exactly. <laughs> <It's more laughs> exactly. And we, we, we carry a little bit, but uh, he's doing most of the work. And that's one of those where you're shorter and then you go over a little crevice yep. and you're hanging <laughs> with a little mm. cartoons. You're having like, a picture of a cartoon in your head, aren't you? You're lifting, lifting. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what it is. So our liturgy is really, it is, it is never our own thing. And so that's why when we talk about the mass or you know, other prayer services or whatever, this is not necessarily something we are creating, that we are doing, that we are, uh, it is first the work of God. And the question we ask then is how do we participate with God in bringing about this liturgy? Mm -hmm. So... That's what we're going to. Uh, that's what we're going to dive into this week and kind of talk about our participation in the liturgy that is our salvation. Very good. Well, today, Jonathan, as a holy day, yeah. uh, the Immaculate Conception, uh, the solemnity uh, here in the midst of of Advent, uh, it is a break from your Advent penance or discipline if you have any of those it's a little it's a mini uh sunday it even it, i mean it's it's kind of big it, we sing a gloria today we oh my goodness we, we dress everything in white you can even have flowers present in the sanctuary it's um it's yeah there's some good there's some good stuff about that so once again have a cupcake <laughs> eat something eat something <laughs> treatful for yourself and uh, enjoy the day see you at noon Arrivederci. Bye. Bye.